The truth of the matter, Sojourner Truth. Who is Isabella Bonfrey? Isabella was an American abolitionist and women's rights activist who devoted her life to helping slaves and fighting for women's rights in any way she could. But before she was able to accomplish all that she did, she had to overcome trials and tribulations in her own life. After Isabella finally escaped the freedom with her daughter in 1826, she learned that her son Peter, then five years old, had been illegally sold to a Dr. Gedney in Alabama who was on his way to England. But fighting the boy too small for his service, he sent him back to his brother Solomon Gedney in Alabama. This illegal and fraudulent transaction had been perpetrated some months before Isabella knew of it, as she was now living at Mr. Von Wegner's. She then sued to retrieve her son Peter, and in 1828, with the help of a lawyer, Isabella became the first black woman to take a white man to court and win. After changing her name to Sojourner Truth in 1843, she joined the Northampton Association of Education and Industry in Northampton, Massachusetts. The organization was founded by abolitionists. They supported a broad reform agenda including women's rights and pacifism. Members lived together on 500 acres of land as a self-sufficient community. This was where Truth came into contact with abolitionists William Lloyd Garrison, Frederick Douglass, and Wendell Phillips. From them and many other members of the association, Truth learned all that she could about abolition, but in 1846, the organization unfortunately dissolved. In 1850, the same year her memoirs were published under the title, The Narrative of Sojourner Truth, A Northern Slave, it was rumored that Truth gave this well-known speech called Ain't I a Woman at the Ohio Women's Rights Convention in Akron, Ohio. That man over there says that women need to be helped into carriages and lifted over ditches and to have the best place everywhere. <laughs> Nobody ever helps me into carriages <laughs> or over mud puddles or gives me any best place. And ain't I a woman? Look at me. I have plowed and planted and gathered into barns and no man could head me and ain't I a woman I could work as much and eat as much as any man when I could get it and I could bear the lash as well and ain't I a woman I have born 13 children seen most sold off into slavery and when I cried out with a mother's grief, none but Jesus heard me. And ain't I a woman? That, that, that man in the back there, he says, women can't have as much rights as men because Christ wasn't a woman. Well, where did your Christ come from? Where did your Christ come from. He came from God and a woman. Man didn't have nothing to do with it. <laughs> if the first woman God ever made was strong enough to turn the world upside down all alone, well, these women here together ought to be able to turn it back and get it right side up again. <laughs> and they ask him to do it. The men better let them. This speech to this day has been inspiring women to take a stand for women's rights. Her speech is what made her so well known today. When the names Sojourner Truth or Isabella Bonfrey are talked about, this speech, Ain't I a Woman, must always be addressed. But according to Nell Painter, history was wrong. She goes on stage and she gives this very famous um, speech, aren't I a woman? But what happens is that she, uh, or, or after much historical research, we find that Sojourner Truth never gave that speech. She was at the convention uh, uh, in Akron and she had um, had, had a very uh, um, important and career in abolitionism uh, by 1851. Uh, but she had not given that speech. The speech was given by 
uh, another women's rights activist, a white woman uh, in Ohio named Frances Dana Gage. Um, and the speech itself really is a, 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 a fiction, or at least it's the product of Gage and how, what she thought Sojourner Truth might have said, or what she thought so Sojourner, Truth, Sojourner Truth could have said being a black woman. But none of the speeches. Frances true. Dana Barker Gage was a lecturer, political activist, journalist, and novelist. Frances Dana Barker Gage was a lecturer, political activist, journalist, and novelist. At the 1851 Women's Rights Convention, she got to chair the event. Gage overran political protest and allowed actually Sojourner Truth to speak. To this day, Years some later, Gage recorded her own recollection of true speech. Some historians to this day, some historians question the accuracy of her recollection. Some historians say that it was Gage that wrote the entire speech, and some say True did get the speech, but Gage didn't construct the syntax properly. Regardless of whether True gave the speech or not, she did many inspirational things for women and slaves. After the Civil War ended and slavery with it, Sojourner Truth moved to D.C. for three Bureau years to join the Freedmen's Bureau. Established in 1865 the Freedmen's Bureau was a U.S. federal government agency established in 1865 to aid free slaves during in the time, South during the Reconstruction Truth era of the U.S. Truth was influential during this time, Truth strongly protested the segregation. Truth was influential in changing to laws to integrate the streetcar in the nation's capital so before Truth moving back to Battle Creek, Michigan. Abolition and slavery made her an so inspiration to Truth's anyone constant who dedication to abolition and slavery made her an inspiration to anyone who even heard the name Sojourner Truth. To fight for what they She's inspired in. people, Although it was women, unknown and men Truth really to fight for what they believe in. Although it was unknown if Truth really made the speech in a woman, undoubtedly true. the many other things she and done for women and ex-slaves are undoubtedly true. And that's the truth of the matter.